Hello everyone, Krusty783 here and welcome back to a brand new Ninjago Crystallized video. Today we are discussing the Oni Temple from Season 8. And now you might be asking, why are we doing that? Well, it is very likely to be playing a huge part in the plot of Crystallized. Before we do get started though, I'd like to give credit to Froggy Shade on Instagram and Secretly Harumi on Twitter. These two people initially caught these similarities which caused me to look into the whole thing deeper. So yeah, your guys' discoveries were what inspired me to look into this deeper for this video. So... Thank you. If you want to drop either of them a follow, their links will be in the description below. Now, with that out of the way, let's get on to the video. So, as probably we all know by now, the Oni Temple is the direct opposite of the Temple of Light, which walls were covered in prophetic paintings that predicted the events of seasons 1 to 2. The walls of the Oni Temple seen in Game of Masks are littered with very similar paintings. And while Lloyd does frame it as being the Oni's past, It's their story. Who? The Oni. It is very safe to assume that these are actually prophetic drawings much like the ones in the Temple of Light. Well, when you line up what's being depicted in these paintings versus the current events of the show, the resemblance is near uncanny. So we're going to start small and then get bigger in scope as the video goes on. So to start off we have illustrations of what look very similar to the Vengestone Warriors. I believe these guys are supposed to represent an army of foot soldiers. And they're definitely not humans because you can see what the only depict humans like here in this scene where they're being enslaved. So, I think operating under the assumption that these drawings are prophetic, the Vengestone Warriors are a pretty safe bet for what these guys are meant to represent. Next up, we have this demonic sensual looking character, who looks almost exactly like the Crystal King fully powered up that we see in the sets. The resemblance between this Oni Temple painting and the Crystal King himself is absolutely palpable, which leads me to believe that the painting is depicting the King. That being said, we don't know what's up with these guys yet, so we're gonna have to wait and see if maybe the Crystal King unleashes Oni, or maybe these things are just a broad metaphor for darkness hitting Ninjago. Maybe only some of this drawing is prophetic, and other parts of it actually are just the Oni's past. I would love to hear what you guys make of these though, let me know in the comments. Okay, so this next part of the video enters spoiler territory for episodes 11 and 12 of Crystallized. It's nothing like any of the big reveals, we're only looking at some stuff, but if you want to go completely blind, click off now and come back later. So the ninja send Lloyd to hijack the mechanic's invitation to the Crystal King's council so they can infiltrate it. And Zane has up on a tracker Lloyd so we can see where he's going on the map. Lloyd eventually enters a subway car which leads directly to the Crystal King's base. And once he does on Zane's map he starts flying across Ninjago's landmass and up to a very familiar location. Primeval's Eye. Now, you might be wondering what's so significant about Primeval's Eye and why it's relevant to this Oni Temple discussion at all. In case you don't remember, Primeval's Eye is the location of the Oni Temple. The Oni Temple is in a dense jungle. The Crystal King's base rises out of a dense jungle. The Oni Temple has a giant menacing Oni face on it. So does the Crystal King's base. I think it's a very safe assumption that the Oni Temple from Season 8, where they found the Mask of Hatred and Harumi betrayed Lloyd, is the same structure as the now Crystal King's base. On top of this, the final bit of the Oni painting we need to talk about is the rising Oni face in the sky, which looking at this drawing from a prophetic perspective, very clearly foreshadows the rising Oni face base from the ground. If they really did plan this out all of this time ago, then that is unbelievably impressive and gives me huge faith in the future of Ninjago. So yeah, in conclusion, the Crystal King has repurposed the Oni Temple from Season 8 to be his base of operations. And the paintings in the wall of that temple seem to foreshadow what he'll do. Once again, thank you to these people for pointing out these initial similarities, otherwise I would have never looked back on this scene and realised how connected they are. Their links will be in the description, be sure to give them a follow. What do you guys think of this connection though? I think it could be genuinely game changing for the events of this season, but I'd love to know what you all think. So be sure to let me know in the comments. If and only if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like rating on it, dislike if not, share with a friend if you found it interesting, and if you like Ninjago Theory videos like this, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you know as soon as they come out. Also, if you want to discuss Ninjago with other Ninjago fans, be sure to join my Discord server. We have a channel specifically for crystallized talk and I'd love to have more people. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.